Around 2013, we started to see rapid increases in homelessness. It's not because we suddenly started getting stupid with how we were spending our money on this problem. In fact, we had homelessness flat for a number of years. But then, just as we felt like we were starting to turn a corner, the economy caught fire and rents went through the roof. All the old cheap rents on the private market went away. And so people kind of at the bottom of the economic ladder, they were no longer able to scrape it together. We, in fact, declared a state of emergency as a city three years ago. The crisis is truly a public health crisis for the folks who are living outside, for the community at large. It is bad for the health of the city. It's bad for our psyche. It's bad for everyone. It's hell. I cannot describe it. I cannot, and it's... The atrocities that happen on the streets are... I've stepped over bodies, more than one. There's a variety of studies that show that it costs anywhere from $50,000 to $100,000 or more per year per person just because of the expensive passive public costs that are associated with managing their homelessness through emergency responders and law enforcement in the court system compared to $16,000 to $22,000 a year to provide that person with permanent supportive housing. We actually have a neat solution to all of that through Housing First and Permanent Supportive Housing. It is a win, 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 win. The big issue is revenue. In Seattle and in Washington State, we don't have an income tax. We don't have a corporate income tax. We don't have capital gains. The Seattle City Council is proposing a new business tax to fight homelessness. So we did a tough analysis to ask um, our largest corporations, who, by the way, are prospering in our local economy, to add um, $275 per head um, just for a short period of time, five years. It is the biggest businesses, like a Nordstrom or a Starbucks, and almost certainly Amazon. This is less Less than 3% of the businesses in Seattle. Ultimately, many of the businesses said, hey, we don't love this, but we understand why you're doing it. And we even had folks like Amazon say, I can get there at 275, which when you say yes, I don't care if you're from business or labor, your word should be your bond. After 24 hours of them saying yes, they changed their mind and they funded the opposition. Big warning shot from Amazon, freezing construction of one of their biggest Seattle projects. People were whipped into a frenzy. Ultimately, the pressure was put on city council to have a repeal vote. That put businesses in the position where now that they've shot down the head tax, they need to answer, how are you going to contribute to the solutions to homelessness? During this time, I was invited to come and talk on a number of what I would call very conservative outlets. And there was one individual who kept nodding his head, and he contacted me afterward and said, I, I want to I want to work with you on solving chronic homelessness. How do we do this? And so we hatched the Third Door Coalition. Everyone who comes and talks to me says, it's amazing that you have this disparate group of people sitting together and talking, and there's a hunger for people. People want to be part of that. The Third Door Coalition is it's about bringing unlikely allies together. Folks from business, folks from academia, and a couple of service providers who are focused on addressing chronic homelessness through permanent supportive housing, and that's DESC and Plymouth Housing. The head tax is a good example. I mean, there are business leaders, and Howard was, was very vocal about no head tax. Daniel was on the head tax committee. I was involved. The thing that I got excited about after that whole 
public issue was coming together the third door that we are not going to get into these battles, right? We're going to full steam ahead and get some housing done. Through something like the Third Door Coalition, we are for the first time a motley group of people with different ideologies and perspectives and experiences speaking in one voice. And that makes us all more powerful. Why don't we go get 50 companies, a million each, 250 over five years. We go to the state, said, you've got a mental health funding issue, 250, we get 150 city, 150 county. And oh, by the way, you have some laws to change and some zoning and all that has to happen together. Then that answer is what, what is business gonna do? Business. Here's an answer, business. right? Business. And this is the big numbers and then there's all sorts of other stuff, but. It's huge, that's fantastic. And so she's like, I figured it was 800 million. I said, so this is, we're, we're in the ballpark of if you're going to do something, it's not little. What I'm hoping will come out of various conversations that are happening, including at Third Door, is that we get a robust revenue package that we can either pass here at City Council, King County Council would great too, or at the ballot. We've seen that happen. In Los Angeles, they brought together this broad coalition that had business at it, that had the Hilton at it, along with labor unions and community organizations and housing advocates, and they passed a $1.2 billion tax package. And we've seen it happen in San Francisco, where we have a really progressive tax measure that just passed, and one of their large tech companies put money into supporting the effort. In this city that calls itself progressive, I am hoping that we can come together instead of fighting each other. And I have to tell you, I'm hoping we can do it real soon.